Yo, yo, we live. Hey, man, welcome, welcome back to the Golden Goose DFS show. I am your host, Chandler Blakely, aka Goose, here today bringing you another edition of my starting five for DraftKings and FanDuel. All right, but before we get into it, y'all know what we got up first going over the line of review, taking a look at my starting five from the previous slate, just breaking down how we did and our strategy on yesterday's slate, all right? So we're going to jump right into that. But before we do, man, y'all hit the subscribe button for me. Please, please hit that like button for your boy, man. It greatly help me out, man. Thank y'all for tuning in, all right? Now, uh, yesterday was, eh, we lost a little of our buy-in. Nothing major. No no big win. Um, this is uh, this is my best line of updated start five. Uh, put up 251, basically. This is in the uh, dollar 20 max right here. If you caught the update, it's starting five yesterday. You know I went with uh, Goran Dragic, Monty Morris, Jimmy Butler, Yantis Antetokounmpo, and DeAndre Aiden, all right? Starting at the top with Goran Dragic, 38%. Man, I thought we was in line for a big night, especially when they announced uh, about a half hour before the game that he would be in the starting lineup. In hindsight, that probably hurt his usage because he used to coming off the bench and not having Jimmy and Bam on the court. It's usually like him and Jimmy or him and Bam. So him being inserted to the starting lineup with both of those guys probably hurt his usage a little bit. Uh, we got him at 38% right here. He put up uh, 21 DK points, not nearly enough as the Heat got destroyed our, our strategy yesterday was with, with the heat being down 2-0 first game back in miami we thought they were really i thought they would really come out energized and ready to go i didn't know if they would win the game but i thought they would definitely put up a better fight i thought it would be a close game similar to like the first one so i wanted to get uh going Dragic and jimmy butler and um I like George Dragic for his price and i told y'all we saw the video yesterday i expected jimmy butler to lead the charge for this team and with those guys, excuse me, pardon. <clears throat> uh, and with those guys um, being in my lineup, I wanted to run it back with with Giannis Antetokounmpo because I didn't think the Heat could blow out the uh, Bucks. Like I said, I was expecting a tightly contested game like the first go round. So since I had these two guys and Drogic and Jimmy Butler, I wanted to run it back with Giannis, the best fantasy producer in the league. So. But uh didn't work out the way I planned as the Bucks just dominated the Heat again, man. It is over with for the Heat. I, th I thought they would be in line for a much better game than what we had. But uh, Dragons at 38% only gave us 21 DK points. Monty Morris right here, 34%. Knew he'd be kind of chalky after having a big game with him and Austin Rivers splitting the time. He gave us 23 DK points, but Austin River actually had the better game yesterday. Uh, he put up a nice one. Uh, he, he got like 33 uh, DK points, something like that. But Monte Morris, he was solid enough at 4,200. Didn't kill us right here. Of course, Jimmy Butler that I ran with Dragons. Knew he would be chalky. Got him at 41% on. He tried to lead a charge. He gave him 40 DK points, but the blowout just put him away. He didn't even see any closing run in the fourth quarter, so definitely couldn't get a ceiling-type performance for him. Same deal with Giannis right here. Got him at 29% on. The Bucks are just balling, man. They're just playing really, really well, and he didn't have to do much, man. As they ha as they handed the uh, the Heat the third loss in the series very easily. So just forty eight DK points from um, Giannis. He was on his way to a big one. If if the Heat could have found a way to keep it to keep it close, this would have we would have really been in the money because Giannis was on the way to a monster, man. He had seventeen points and seventeen boards and and, uh, and limited running. If if the game is tight, he get close and run. He's sixty plus right here. Jimmy Butler's probably fifty plus. So just a blowout hindered us right here. Did not see that coming. Thought the Heat would put up a better performance. Closing out the starting five, when DeAndre Aiden, just too cheap, man. This is just, as long as he's going to be 61, 63, 65, and what he probably go to next time, how they've been moving the salary. He just, he just always in play. 36% right here. Uh, gave us 41 DK points. A nice, solid double-double from DeAndre Aiden. He's going to be in play the rest of the playoffs. Trust me, if, if, if his price stays down now. Now, coming down at the bottom, I want to go CJ McCullum, man. This is the dollar twenty max, so it's... 47,000 people in here. So many people that you got to try to get creative if you want to take it down over here. So you want to try to di differentiate yourself from the field. We knew the top part would be a little chalky. So I want to go to CJ right here, man. A guy who has all the potential in the world for 50-plus point games, maybe even a 60 here and there. 
In this matchup at Denver, same thing with Portland. Their first game back at home, coming off a loss in Denver. Thought they would come out and play tough, and they did. It was a good game over here. Uh, Denver won by five, but CJ McCullough was very solid. Didn't give his biggest performance as I thought, man. As uh, Norman Powell played a little better, and Lillard did what Lillard do. So he gave us 41 DK points at 19% on. Great ownership right here. Just needed more fantasy points from him, but still very solid nonetheless. Uh, coming in the other four, went Jay Crowder. That's just my, uh, I know everybody, Robin Covington was hot on everybody's radar yesterday. I just wanted to go uh, securely with Jay Crowder, a guy who I knew uh, should be pushing 30 minutes and who just haven't shot the ball well and hoping that he could probably turn it around and, and see a few shots fall. But he was just okay, uh, 24 DK points. Uh, Covington ended up being the better play here, but I'm fine with it. Covington only put up like 28, 29. He didn't crush him, so. but he definitely helped you out if you had him in your lineup. And then coming in at the bottom, man, just a just a low salary play right here, thirty two hundred. I told you just the dollar twenty max. So tons of people here, so you gotta try to, you know, differentiate yourself, differentiate differentiate yourself a little bit, man. If you're gonna try to come in first, man, especially if you're trying to come in a solo first. I want to go to Mark Gasol right here. So he, I saw he got twenty minutes last time out. And at 3,200, I felt like if he got 20 minutes again, that could be very solid for him. As he's a solid fantasy producer. We got him at 3% on. He only gave us 13 DK points. But this type of play on th on playoff slates, especially in three-game slates, this play is not going to kill you right here, man. If if these other pieces are right right here, we, we, you, we could take down the lineup with Mark Gasol and him. The cheap guys like this, that you can you can take a shot on, man. They're not going to kill you. I'm pretty sure... They, if, if you put it together right, these type of performances can be in a winning lineup. As we've seen the past couple of days, guys winning with 15 and 16 point fantasy producers in their lineup. It's just all about putting the pieces together. You're going to have to take a shot sometimes. So that's what we did with Marcus Gasol. He let us down right here. But, you know, like I said, not a bad day yesterday. Lost a, a little bit of our buy-in. But let's get on over to tomorrow and let's see if we can't rake in some money today. At the top, three game of on this Friday, I want to look at uh, Peyton Pritchard. We could have some chalky value today with Kimball Walker being questionable. This is highly dependent on the Kimball Walker news. Saying something with his knee, if he if he is forced to sit, Peyton Pritchard will un undeniably be the chalk of the day. He might be 80-90% on. But like I said, it's a three-game playoff slate. Just go to it. If Kimba is out, just play, just play Peyton Pritchard. And don't even worry about it. Just try to get different somewhere else and just lock Peyton Pritchard in, all right? Coming in as shooting guard. Want to go to PG-13 again, man. He just re refused to move his price. Very solid play. They're going to have to come out all guns blazing because if they go down 3-0, they're getting swept. I'm telling you that right now. So they're going to come out all guns blazing trying to win this game. He could see 40 minutes. His partner could see 40 minutes. And th they do everything for this Clipper team. If they don't play well, it's definitely over. So we want to get to Paul George, which leads me to my small forward play. Get his running mate, Kawhi Leonard. He probably going to play 40-plus minutes today. They're going to play all the minutes needed to win this game. Both of these guys could be in line for 40, maybe 42 minutes, depending on how the game going. But they the main two producers for this Clippers team. If they don't play well, they're going to get ran off the court. Um, I'm, taking, I'm taking them right here, especially at this price for Kawhi Leonard. Both of them are too cheap for their roles for this team. So you can put both of them in your lineup. I'm going to look to get both of them in there today. Coming in at power forward, I'm going right back to my boy Jason Tatum. <laughs> Listen, they down 2-0. Everybody know they don't have a chance. Hopefully that they don't come out and just lay down. First game back in Boston. So Jason Tatum may be flying solo with no Kimba. It might just be him and Evan Fournier left to do all the scoring. Even if Kimba plays, Jason Tatum is in play, man. He's going to have to lead them. Hopefully, like I said, them being at home, hitting the home court, give them a surge of energy, and they come out and play harder. And Jason Tatum can lead them with a big performance. He hasn't done it, hasn't shot the ball well the first two games. Hopefully, that turns around right here. I like getting to Jason Tatum tonight. And coming in at my center spot, Taj Gibson, man, 3,800. Now, I don't know if he's going to start again. We saw him get the start for – in the second half last game versus uh the Hawks here. So I don't know if that trend continues and they start him in this uh matchup, but he definitely should be in line for 25, 30 minutes regardless of whether he starts or not. 
I think Thibodeau just like him over Nerlens Noel. Or, or Nerlens Noel, his foot is not quite 100% either. Or he should be in line for 25, 30 minutes. And I definitely take that at this price tag at 3800 all right? So there you have it, man. My starting five for DraftKings, Peyton Pritchard, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Jason Tatum, and Taj Gibson, all right? Get you some exposure to these guys. You know I'm going to have plenty of it. Now let's go take a look at FanDuel, see what I like over there. Coming in on FanDuel, man, same thing at the top. Going with Peyton Pritchard, a little more expensive, but just expecting him to be a key player in this uh, for this Celtics team if Kimball Walker is out. He might still get more minutes if Kimball plays and just not 100% healthy. Undeniably, uh, if, if it's all the way bad, he's out. They're not going to risk it because they know they can't win this series, but if he's good enough to try to give it a run, he'll try to give it a go and see how it feels, but Peyton Pritchard definitely is going to be a lock if Kimball is out. Coming in as shooting guard, staying with my boy Paul George, eight eight hundred. Still like the price on him on him fan do. He's just a guy, man. You just gotta play him. Him and Kawhi get all the uses, all the shots they want. Just play Paul George today. Coming in a small forward, though, I want to look at Evan Fournier over here, man. 5,500. Small forward in the center position is tough on fan duel tonight. Very, very tough. Um I'm going to pay down a little bit to Evan Fournier. Just anticipating Kemba missing or just Kemba not being 100%. Him and Tatum are going to have to carry the load if the Celtics want to have any chance in winning this game. They don't have a chance, but they're going to come out and fight like they're still in the series. So I wanted to get a look at Evan Fournier right here at this 5,500. Coming in at power four, I want to look back to my boy Chris Stotts for man. 7,500 over here. Man, he, he's locked in for 30-plus minutes. He's going to get his shots off. We just need him to hit the boards a little better. If he can get on the boards a little better, he can really give us a big performance. But he's going to be solid nonetheless. This 7500 price tag is too cheap for him for the minutes and the shot volume he gets over here. Especially with uh, the Clippers are going to try to intensify their uh the defense on Luka Doncic, he probably see a lot more double teams. So he's that's the reason why guys like Tim Hardaway Jr. and stuff having big performances because he's kicking the ball out and they knocking down shots. As soon as Porzingis get hot and hit a, and hit a couple shots, he's going to keep getting fed as well. I like getting the Christos Porzingis right here. And then coming in at my center, I'm rolling Taj Gibson. 5K over here. Price a little too steep for me. I like it to be a little lower over here, but... Man, it's just, if he's going to get the 30-plus minutes, man, he's really one of the better plays at the center spot. Man, you could go to Clint Capella. He really hasn't been getting it done, though. You got Robert Williams and Tristan Thompson. They splitting time. You can just close your eyes and pick one and see who's the better play going to be over there. I'm going to go with Taj Gibson, a guy who I think should see increased run and see the big majority of the minute run for the New York Knicks, all right? There you have it, man, my starting five for fan duel. Peyton Pritchard, Paul George, Evan Fournier, Chris Stotts, Porzingis, and Taj Gibson. Get you some exposure to these guys. You know I'm going to have plenty of it, man. Y'all be sure to go follow on Twitter for the updated starting five. Or uh, uh, the link should be low in the comment section, man, with a description of the video. And if you have any questions, man, leave them on Twitter. Leave them in the comment section. I'm here. I'll reply to them all day long as, I, well, as soon as I see them, man. All right? That's going to do it. Y'all know the motto. Chances make champions. Y'all green up, man. I'll see y'all tomorrow, all right? Let's go.